Right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. We are still waiting for one member, but uh, we'll start since we have a quorum. Um, and he'll, he'll join us later. later. So, we'll call this meeting to order at 5.07, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of Mexico as the symbol of perfect friendship for the United States. action item, which is adoption of agenda. Uh, Madam Superintendent? No. no not yet. Not. I'll be, sorry. be just Before the agenda is approved, no. I'd like to add. No. I'm sorry. That we don't run your meet our meetings like you run yours. Sorry. Yeah, we're open. Okay. Yeah, we're no. open. Yeah. No. That's fine. I, Please I, allow I, the, per the public to speak. That's all I'm asking for. So if you'll sit down, we're going to take care of it. So. Thank you. So the... Um, Typically under our special meetings, we don't have uh, attendance, and so we do not include citizen comment. Um, but given the uh, attendance this evening uh, during board comments, we will allow those that have signed up to go ahead and speak um, as citizens, um, as guests of, of the board, essentially. Um, so you will have an opportunity if you've signed up. Uh, once the meeting started, though, um, we will no longer uh, accept um, people to sign up. So if you've signed up, thank you. And you will have your opportunity when we come out of our closed executive session uh, during the board comment section under section three. So um, with that, um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. if you want to collect that money, that would be fine. Um, so recommendation for us? Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend that we adopt the agenda um, for the meeting this evening. All right, so the recommendation from Superintendent Salazar to adopt the agenda as is. So moved. All right, so we have a motion and a second. I move that we adopt the agenda. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All members in favor say aye. 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 Welcome to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, short agenda, but uh, we do have a, uh, an executive session coming up. Uh, part of the reason for moving uh, or, or taking the citizen comment during board comments um, is we have an attorney with us this evening and we are, she's on the clock, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're not paying enough just to sit there and enjoy our evening, so. Yeah, so, uh, so we need to uh, proceed with that, so. All right, so moving on, approval of minutes. Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend that you approve the minutes from the regular board meeting from September 20th, 2022. So a recommendation from Superintendent Salazar to approve the draft of the regular meeting minutes from September 20th, 2022. Any questions about the minutes, changes, modifications? So if there's no questions on the motion. I still move that we accept the minutes from the previous meeting. All right, so we have a motion. I'll need a second. I'll second it. So a motion and second. All members in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Do you want to get over in a couple more minutes or we can. roll call or I think we'll, we'll go ahead and proceed um, and then uh, have him uh, just read a letter, you know, just let him know that we entered into it. So that being said. Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend that um, we go into closed executive session um, for section 10-15-1H8 for confidential discussion of the purchase, acquisition, or disposal of real property or water rights. And number two, limited personnel matters as permitted under section 10-15-1H2 regarding high school personnel. All right, so the recommendation from Superintendent Salazar for the board to enter into exec closed executive session uh, pertaining to section 10-15-1 H8 for confidential discussion of the purchase, acquisition, or disposal of real property, property or water rights, limited personnel matters as permitted under section 10-15-1 H2. Uh, 
uh, regarding high school personnel. Um, I'll motion that we go into closed executive executive session with the personnel matters section 10 15 1 h right, So we have a recommendation and uh, a motion. I need a second. I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second. We'll do roll call vote starting with Ms. Burns. Wendy Burns. Wendy Burns, I vote yes. Linda Hudson, I vote yes. Elizabeth Howes, I vote yes. Charles Arlindo votes yes. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend that we come back into regular session. All right. So for the recommendation from Superintendent Salazar to exit executive session and reconvene into regular session, I'll need a motion. So we have so got a motion and a second. All members in favor say aye. 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 We are now back in regular session. Um, we have our list charge. Apologize for the duration that it took us during executive session. Um, it uh, was definitely intense, and um, my bladder was weak. <laughs> But uh, like I had mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, that we would go ahead and take some comments uh, from the uh, uh, from the public uh, during this portion of the meeting. Uh, so well, hopefully, you, excuse uh, me, Miss. Um, uh, oh. Our rules girl says you need to say that nothing was voted. Oh on yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so as we came out of the executive session, uh, no other topics other than those listed on the agenda were discussed, nor were any actions taken during the executive, uh, closed executive session. Thank you. Um, when you signed up, uh, hopefully you had an opportunity to read uh, through some of the um, suggestions, recommendations. Um, we'll be limited to two minutes. The timer will be up here on the screen. Um, please be respectful of it. You know. Uh, you know, uh, if you're getting close, uh, if you would like me to give you a reminder, I can. Otherwise, uh, you know, we do have the timer up there. Uh, we try uh, to model good decorum, uh, you know, um, for our children. Uh, so, uh, you know, with that in mind, uh, you know, we ask our guests as well uh, that we, you know, just try to model good decorum. So, mm -hmm. with that, I think we will get started. Um, first person is Philandro Anaya. Well, usually I get to go last. Um, Phil, excuse me, would you mind stating your name for uh, just that, That's what I was thinking. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Philandro Aranaya. My address is P.O. Box 1355, Edgewood, New Mexico. Um, I live up the hill. Uh, first of all, um, Madam Superintendent, Board President, I want to apologize for interrupting the meeting early. It wasn't an intent to uh, get hostile. It was just an intent for a correction that, um, as, as I do understand how agendas work. So I just wanted to make sure that the public had an opportunity to speak, and that was it. Okay. Um, there's already a lot of hostility towards uh, the Board of Education and uh, the town of Edward. And that needs to stop, it needs to stop right now. So I'm asking for one thing and one thing only is, is that we sit down and communicate. You are our neighbors, we are your neighbors. We are all on the same table together. We want the same thing for all of our community and that is to prosper. Okay, so having said all of that, um, there's a couple of rumors going out here right now that uh, the reason that we want the building is because we want the water rights. First of all, when I was on the Board of Education, I know what we did with the water rights to make sure that they were sound for the district. Okay, so we don't want the water rights. We're not using it for commercial business. 
we're using it for the town people as a community center so that we have a place to go. We don't even want a brand new building. We'll take the low big town building and remodel it. We'll do that. We do that for the community. It's not that we want uh, kicking anybody out. We just want a place for the people of the town of Edgewood to have a place to, to meet and greet and for the kids to come in and be able to play basketball, baseball, soccer, things like that. Thank you, Commissioner. So Appreciate we you. will relieve all the responsibilities from the building. Appreciate that. I apologize for my attire. I didn't get my shoes changed. <laughs> um, my name is Wendy Lossing. I'm a citizen. I have children in the school district. Um, I think each and every one of you for this, the education that my kids are getting, the opportunities that they have here. Um, the division over a school, over a building, is so sad. Um, I was just speaking with several people a few minutes ago. Um, I'm hearing about a well, a concern about a well. I said, well, okay, so if you bought this building off the school district, would you be willing to not have any access to the well? Yes. Um, just a thought. I'm wondering if there's any way that there can be a meeting between the commissioners um, and you guys, the city meeting that can be civil. Um, I, I know that you would be civil. I mean with the um, observers that where everybody can bring their facts and maybe come to a decision on this that can be beneficial or at least make a win-win for everybody. Um, on my end, uh, new person here, I, it is so sad that we have so many wonderful people in these wonderful communities and these amazing schools and our kids. And that funds can be getting transferred, or not necessarily transferred, but that this could potentially affect education. Um, I'm just asking if there's some way that we can all come together and come to some sort of agreement on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sherry Amber. I think she just stepped out for a moment. Okay. Thank you. Robert Gonzalez. My name is Robert Rosales. I live at 15 Peaceful Drive in Edgewood. Um, as I want y'all to know, turning down that school is wrong on so many levels. First, the city has offered to take it off your hands and maintain it and fix it up and make it where we can use it. Second, the building would serve the community better if it's left standing rather than an empty dirt lot. We have plenty of those now. We're not doing anything with any of those. Third, this building would allow us um, to support the needs of our community. I mean, I hear and see on Facebook every day, what is there for kids to do? There is no place for them to go dance. There is no arcade. There is nothing for them to do except cause trouble. And by tearing this building down, you're telling them, hey, go cause more trouble. We don't want you to have a community center. Um, I went to school there. I was there the day the Challenger blew up. Then I seen this building being built. Thought this would be the new middle school. Was told no, this is gonna be the new elementary school. The idea was to shut that build, that school down. Bust everybody over here. Why? 
because it was at that time when we were in a school district. Edgewood did not matter. You were telling us all right now, nothing has changed since the mid 80s. You're telling us in Edgewood, we don't matter. And as we've given you solutions to every reason you've given us why it needs to be torn down, we've found reasons to keep the building. It's falling on deaf ears. Uh, that kind of attitude is kind of what we had from bullies. It's mine, I'll do what I want with it. Now you're telling us the same thing in Edgewood. It belongs to us, we'll do what we want with it. Um, as far as building, being abandoned, it wasn't abandoned. Abandoned is when you mobile you leave. Y'all kicked the business out and then said it was abandoned. And the last thing I just want to tell y'all, I heard from a patient when I left her office today that she was told by one of the board members that the only reason that it was fighting for this is they are greedy and they want the water rights. And that that person should not concern herself with it because she's not a resident of Edgewood. I tell you, she has kids. This is every bit of her right to keep it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Sherry Abrams, come back in. Is it Janie? Janie? Platt? Sorry, I'm slow. My name is Janie Platt and I am um, a resident in Edgewood, Six Trucker Trail, and I uh, am also a licensed registered veterinary technician in the state of New Mexico. And when the dog head fire hit several years ago, if you all remember that, I went down and Los Vecinos was being used as a, a place for people to bring their pets. And we had hundreds of pets there, all kinds of pets. And we spent days taking care of it. In Edgewood, we have no place for that. There's no place. We don't have a building big enough to even think about taking on if there's a wildfire. It's not only if there's a wildfire, it's when is there going to be a wildfire? Is it going to be your house? Is it going to be your house? Or my house? Which of us is going to have to evacuate? You might not live in Edgewood. You might. If you live in Edgewood, where are you going to take your pets? Have you thought about it? Something to think about. Okay? And then I have a message from my neighbor. I, I apologize she could not be here tonight. You might know her name. Her name is Rita Loy Simmons. She wrote to me and said, please talk to the school board for me. She said, hello again. I have asked Janie to give you my thoughts. This is Moriarty School's second attempt to arrest development in Edgewood. Most home development is in Edgewood. Two charter schools have developed because of the school district short-sightedness. We supported the Center for the Arts and find it is underutilized. Why are you not planning better for the, for the center of the growth? Tearing down a useful building that could be repurposed and build on your next project on section 16 or the 40 acres at highway 344 and cross road which is also owned by the school district she says where you have youngsters don't have to be bus so far are you tempting the edgewood area to form its own school district maybe we should we're paying 75 percent maybe we should pull out because we're not being represented by the people in edgewood are we thank you thank you Follow the dollars is what she says. Linda Burke. Good evening, board. I'm Linda Burke. I live at 18 Moon Dust Lane in Edgewood. Um, so my kids did attend Moriarty schools. They're caged out at this point. But um, and we had great experiences while we were there. And I also was actively involved in Town of Edgewood's Parks and Rec program, starting the YES program, the Youth Events for Summer, Run Rally and Rock, um, got the skate park going. I was part of all of that in the early days of Edgewood. It's a, the, the Edgewood School Building is 
is just really the center of so many things that have happened. The YES program started there. We used that the first few years of that program. Um, it's been a great location. I work for the Chamber of Commerce. It's been a great location there for doing community events. The Country Living and Lifestyles Expo has been held there. And it's, it's a building that was built by the community. It has served the community very well. And it could continue to serve the community in a new life after being a school. And um, unfortunately, I haven't yet to hear any good reasons why it should be demolished. And if there are some, it would be helpful to know so that perhaps the community might have an opportunity to consider those as well. But so far from what I've seen, the numbers don't seem to make sense. And um, that building could continue to provide for multi-generational activities and events and programs and um, continue to do what it was built to, build, to do to serve the community. And it seems as though if there is a viable offer that it might be something all worth considering as a way to get out from under the financial stress that the district is feeling and still allow the community to benefit from that structure um, at a reduced cost of overbuilding something entirely new. So I'm hoping that the town will do that. Uh, I'm sorry, that the board will consider doing that and to put the community at large into the picture. Um, it takes more than just, you guys have them all day long at school, but it takes more than that, right? It's a whole child, it's a whole community, and we'd like to see that all supported. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ari Hill. My name is Gary Hill. I reside on Dickle Road across from the school itself. Been there 37 years. Uh, my wife was a volunteer at Edgewood Elementary and we had grandchildren uh, grow up there and attend. Uh, we had a grandson attend here, play ball and graduated from Moorary. So we're pretty familiar with the school systems. Uh, my wife and I would like to have the building saved, have it repaired, where we can use it for Edgewood community projects. Um, this is an opportunity, I feel, for the board and Edgewood to support each other and grow with each other. I believe it would be beneficial for both parties to partner on this and work out a situation where the building can be saved. Thank you. Jackson. Hi, my name is Reed Jackson. Um, you know, I came tonight with an open mind trying to understand both sides of the story, but I haven't heard your side. So I'm hoping after public comment, you can uh, address the issue of this being an unusual meeting to include the two hours and 17 minutes you caused 30 people to wait while you were in a private session, which was unacceptable as a public servant to this public. I hope you will explain your position on why you have voted to demolish this building when the constituents are obviously in favor of you transferring the ownership and responsibility and cost, so it costs you all nothing, over to the town of Edgewood. So, what I do know, because I haven't heard your side, so I really want to hear your side, but let me just sum it up. But this is one-sided, I get it. You gotta, you gotta refute this. You should be convincing us why you voted that way, not the other way around. This isn't about us convincing you to change your vote. It's about you convincing us you made good governance decisions. So you're willing to spend more tax money going to Santa Fe to get money to, to tear it down. My tax money. To tear down a building that still has usefulness to another organization or community interest. You want to build a state-of-the-art facility fine. There's other land adjacent to it that is designated for public schools. It doesn't have to be on that exact spot. But even if it did, when are you going to build that? Enrollment's down so much, you don't even have plans on when you're going to build, when you're going to build that building. So why this year does it have to be torn down? Quit watching the clock. I sat two and a half hours in here. I'm going to take a little bit of time, deal with it. So that adjacent land is right there. We don't want the well. We don't want the water rights. That's not the point. So, 
you're willing to spend more tax money to get less usefulness. It has bad optics, which, by the way, is important in government. It appears you've had spiteful attitudes in this whole process from the Public's Record Act, the letter you sent from the attorney saying that there was a possibility of lawsuits based on her feelings. What did you think you were going to get when you got elected to the school board and made decisions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. I yield and my show time disregard to for constituents. Go ahead and start. Yeah. Uh, Sherry Abrams. Thank you, Sherry. Yield time too, That's bad governance. It's bad governance because you were put in position by these people to make decisions for these people. You're representing these people, but the decision you, yes, you are. Who said you? No, you're not. I said they, they're, they oh, aren't. Oh, they aren't. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> to us, we see they aren't. <laughs> Public servants means service. And we don't feel served. Now, if your constituents don't feel served, but there's a good reason, because that's what representative government is. It's not a democracy. It's a representative government. You have to explain why the decision you made was better than what the masses wanted. But if you can't do that, and you can't convince the masses, this is what's going to happen. You can't feel attacked or upset that people are upset with your representation when they don't agree with your representation. This is bad governance if you can't make your point to the people who put you in office. So please do that. Please help us understand what the compelling arguments are so that we can weigh both sides. And if we agree, we'll support you. And if we don't agree, you should support us. That's how governance is supposed to work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jerry Powers. I'm Jerry Powers. I live at 15 Blanco and Edgewood uh, within the district. Last night we had a meeting, and several of you were there. Uh, there were several hundred people there that overwhelmingly supported the idea of using the uh, abandoned building for a community center for Edgewood. We uh, had, I think you were sent today, nearly 500 petition signatures also that were gathered in a matter of a couple of weeks. The general rule in politics is 10 to 1. If, if 10 people show up or sign petitions, that, or if one person does, there's 10 more that feel the same way they do. It appears that most of Edgewood's uh, constituents, your constituents there, are in favor of this. Um, <clears throat> the environmental costs of not reusing and repurposing that building are huge. To, have, to knock it down and only have to use uh, a duplicative materials uh, to, for us to build a community center and the millions of dollars that it would take for Edgewood to build it is a, is a redundant uh, waste of taxpayer money. So we're, uh, we've been looking for a win-win. We don't expect a win-lose here. We just don't want a win-lose or a lose-lose. I don't even see how it's a win for the school district. Uh, we're, at, we're, gonna, we're willing to take over ent the entire uh, cost of whatever we need to do that building to maintain and operate it. So we'll take it off the district's books. The district will save that money. They'll save over about $900,000 in demolition of taxpayer funds. Whether that comes from the state pocket, the district pocket, or any other pocket, it's still taxpayer funds. So uh, and we've also made you an offer, as you know, uh, that we've, we feel is sufficient for a new site when and if you need it even though we believe that Edgewood has paid for at least 75% of the cost of that building. And we demonstrated in our uh, meeting last night that there is a disparity in what Edgewood has received versus what they've been taxed. So we're asking you to represent your, the same constituents we do on that end of the district. Thank you, sir. I just have a question. Um, what is, I think, ultimately the benefit to the school district and to the taxpayers to demo the facility as opposed to selling it? And I don't know if you all are willing to answer that. I think that's ultimately what everybody here is wanting to hear, is what is the benefit to the school district, taxpayers, um, to demo it as opposed to selling it? Uh, 
Bryce Simmons. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Bryce Simons. I'm at 27 Hillcrest Road in Edgewood. And one of the things I would like to do is reinforce the fact that we don't want the adversarial relationship that we feel is being forced on us. So one of the things I tried to do when I was studying up on this thing is figure out what are the ground rules. And I went and looked at your school district webpage and your mission statement was fairly amorphous and what you'd expect. But you had core values, three of them. One is the students first. And I think you guys are doing a great job on the students. Uh, especially when you're how our kids related. Um, second is trust, and it says, we believe the confidence of all stakeholders is developed by demonstrated integrity, competency, intent, and character. And I emphasize the word character. And I think if I were to give a grade, I'd give a D on what I've seen here recently in the last several years. The third one there is collaboration. We believe success is dependent upon the teamwork of students, staff, parents, and community members, and I emphasize the term community members. There's been no collaboration. And because of that lack of collaboration, we do not feel that we're being represented in Edgewood. I looked on the webpage, I tried to find who the representative on the board was that represented me and my members within the district. I couldn't find out who that is. May I ask who is the representative representing my district in Edgewood? I'm sorry? What district do you live in? I live in Edgewood on the southeast corner of Edgewood. And we would have to have an exact address. 27 <laughs> Hillcrest Road. We, we can get, we can get, get that done. Okay, so yeah, I, but I can't find on your webpage who to even call, who to even complain to, who I'm expecting representation from, and I feel strongly I'm not getting that representation. Okay, um, unfortunately, when the decision was made to break this up, the entire discussion room was omitted in terms of how to get these numbers. And I'll just finish up here real quick because I'd like to make a point. The, when I came to the meeting uh, where the board decided to demolish the building, uh, I saw an appraiser give some sort of an appraisal about all the costs and efforts and ramifications associated with having to either renovate or save the school or tear it down. And quite frankly, his objectivity was very seriously subject to question from an outsider looking in it looked to me like he was doing an appraisal to justify a predetermined conclusion and none of the information that he made available was given out so that we could, as a community, assess the credibility of that information. If we're going to collaborate, as is said in your mission, in your goals, then there needs to be a joint effort whereby the community of Edgewood and the board works together to do an appraisal, to compare notes, to come to some kind of a consensus to see what the costs and difficulties are, otherwise there is no collaboration. So I submit to you that we have time to work together on this thing if we can get the board to change course, to work with us, to acknowledge our res respectfully our rights, and maybe we can come together as a community between Edward and Moriarty, like I think all of us would really like to do. Thank you, sir. And I do appreciate the, the time, uh, and I, I'll apologize again for the, the duration. Um, you know, definitely not intended to uh, to uh, cause grief, but uh, business had to be tended to. So, uh, but moving on, uh, next order of business is uh, designation of board president. Action item. Well, I, I would just like to say that um, I definitely agree with Mr. Naya that we need to continue, we need to try to work together and bring this community together and for some unknown reason there's some people that don't want to and, and that's important, it's important to our kids. I, how are you? How are you going to go to a high school that all our kids go to together and say, well, guess what? 
none of the adults can get along, so now we're going to separate you guys. How does that break? You know, that's not fair to the students. And you know, we have to find a way to sit down and be able to, to talk to one another. But you know, when the town comes out guns blazing and goes from zero to 100, um, doesn't even give us an opportunity. Um, going to the meeting last night, we didn't even get an opportunity. It was, it, it was like a lynch mob for some people. And it was a little scary. And it was being pushed forward by some of the town commissioners at the time. Nobody no, tried to correct wasn't. anybody. People got booed. And, you know, people have a right to say what they want to say, whether you like it or not. You should be listening to both sides. And Absolutely. That's listen to our side. That's what I have to say. So. I think I would also like to, um, I, I also agree uh, and appreciate uh, Commissioner and Ina's words. Um, I think that we, that there has been sort of this disconnect. Um, I, I think I'd like to offer some grace to the, to the community of Edgewood in that it's a passionate issue. I, I get, I absolutely 100% get um, the ask and, and I've, I've talked to several of you and have said that I've never minded the ask. I don't mind the ask. In fact, you know, uh, I think the ask uh, overall makes sense. It's a, it's a fair ask. I think that that is, um, I think that that is indeed, um, you know, uh, fair. In that grace, though, I, I would also point out that the process, that, that this, and I've said this before in my other you know, and some of the other comments is that the district has looked at um, the, the items that the, the projections, the um, evaluations, the assessments um, through PSFA. That's what we use. That's what school districts use. That's that's what um, the process that former board members have used. It's what current board members use. Uh, it, it is the conduit for information that we receive. Um, you know, so I offer the grace in understanding the passion part. I, I get that. That doesn't offend me. Um, I, I actually appreciate it because I'm a very passionate person myself. Um, you know, we've tried to communicate some of the district stances through the FAQ, um, you know, fact sheets, um, to, to have communication back and forth, um, to, to, to kind of give a perspective of, of how this district puts students first, uh, because there are um, factors in this conversation that uh, will affect students. It will affect um, students at the east end of the district, but it will also affect students, almost every student um, on the west side, including at Route 66 Elementary at um, South Mountain and Edgewood Middle. There's implications, you know, that are, or there's um, collateral consequence, I would say, um, for the board um, not doing their due diligence to make sure that we're doing right by children. This, this does affect the education um, and the quality of education um, that we provide. So I guess with that, I would ask for grace back. It, it's not, and, and, and if there's been some kind of contention or something, um, if it's come from me, I apologize. I, I don't believe it has, but, but if it has, I apologize. Uh, because it's also passionate, uh, I'm also passionate about what, um, you know, the, the issue at hand. And so for me, as a decision maker, as a, an elected official as well, I've looked at the entire process. I've looked at the process and, I, and, and I've said, we're gonna meet this benchmark and you know, we're gonna have we're going to use information to make decisions. So, you know, I offer grace, but I also ask for grace. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, I've been at this going on nine, uh, two, in two more months, I will be at it uh, nine years. Two, uh, I was appointed and then elected twice. In that time, I, I, I think I have always used a student first, um, perspective. Um, that, that's always, that's paramount. 
Uh, but I also look at it how it affects our teachers and the parents of, of our students because that's that was in my oath. That was in my oath to, to make sure that we're protecting them being the beneficiaries. And, and so one thing that's been kicked around is about fiscal responsibility. Uh, I, I've heard it several times from, from citizens, and, and I, before I finish that, I will say, I do appreciate your, com your comments, and I do appreciate um, the civil discourse and decorum that was uh, you know, earlier today, so I, I definitely appreciate that. But moving back to the fiscal piece of this, I absolutely believe in fiscal responsibility. So when I hear fiscal responsibility, I absolutely believe that. But I also believe in fiduciary obligation, fiduciary respect, and fiduciary of, um, uh, you know, responsibility as well. And what the difference to me is fiscal, fiscal responsibility is all about money. It's, it's the dollars and it's the cents. And that's it. That's what fiscal responsibility is. It says the money is the only issue. But fiduciary responsibility, in my opinion, is a relationship between you know, uh, the beneficiaries of, you know, of a board of trustees. It's, it's a relationship where you say there's a fiscal element to fiduciary duty. But fiduciary duty takes into account the beneficiaries of your duties. And that, and, and that always comes down for me as, as the students. Um, so how does the building down rep yeah. represent the students? So, you know, I, I apologize, we can't take comments now. But I just, you know, I just, like I said, for me, I look at it from that perspective. <coughs> I hope that um, moving forward, that there can be communication. I think that, that you know, as this process continues, um, I want to be available. Um, and then also, just you know, uh, always in, 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 always have basically as my true north um, our, our students. And so, um, with that, I, I just appreciate you know. Uh, I know there have been some very broad strokes and some very broad accusations against myself, but against the board as well. And I would thank you all for your service. I would thank you, you know, you two have been here longer than I have, and you two are baptism by fire and an issue, you know. But we've done some good work in, in, in the nine years, you know, almost nine years that I've been here, and I know you all have been there. Um, I thank our two previous uh, board members um, for their hard work. Uh, when we talk about decision making, uh, I think votes matter, and I would say my vote has often been very consistent with former board members. Our votes are very much aligned. We, we had very little difference there, and so... Uh, because it's our students first. Because it's our students first, and, and so... I'm sorry for the, the time, uh, but uh, I just wanted to... to bring that up. So. I would mention that our phone numbers are on the MESD website and our emails and um, would welcome phone calls, emails from anybody um, if you want to sit down and talk. It's there. It always has been. I'm not going to say My batteries are going dead. So. <laughs> well, there's no other further comments. Um, I think we should move on to the action item. And for that, we will look to you. Okay, Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend um, that the board approve the uh, board president or designee to um, speak on behalf of the board in regards to uh, the property at 285 Dinkle Road um, from today's date through November 15th. After that date, we'll come back and um, reconvene if that is needed possible. And what was that last point? So uh, the recommendation is that um, the board approve the board president or designee to speak on behalf of the school board in regards to property at the 285 Dinkle Road 
from today's date through November 15th. November 15th. Our November board meeting, basically. Okay. All right, so we have a recommendation to Lieutenant Salazar uh, to include the designation of the board president um, or um, the president's designee to speak on behalf of the board in regards to the property at 285 Dinkle Road um, through November 15th. Any questions, comments? I would just ask um, what are the expectations of of you representing the board in some way? Um, I, I or in any any matter, you know, pertaining to the property at two eighty five. An expectation would be that you guys share information, answer and ask questions with PFSA, and then bring the information back to the board so that we can make an informed, a well-informed decision that best benefits our students of the community and Moriarty Elementary, or Moriarty Elementary School District. Yeah, and I, and I would say, I mean, just, I mean, this is the first time um, as board president that something like this you know, has come before us, and, and, and basically it would not be a decision, you know, you're, you're not a decision maker. I would not make a decision on behalf of the board. Even with this, it would be, um, you know, basically uh, to, 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 like I said earlier, be a sort of a conduit of, of communication, uh, you know, to, to advocate on behalf of the board, board's decisions, so. Uh, so you felt uh, uncomfortable and then you I would have, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, um, and that being said, I would probably have to be that to me, so. Would you be? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I would, no. yeah, but I felt uncomfortable, I would bring it back to you. Yeah, so, I mean, it needs to be back. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it, it, it needs to be come back. back and, and, and mm -hmm. I think that it's, um, you know, like I say, I think that this is a, um, <clears throat> There, there's multiple avenues, and, and once again, in honoring the process, uh, you know, we would definitely bring back anything that that would require a decision. So, um, so with that, we had a recommendation from the superintendent um, to approve the designation of board president um, or his designee to speak on behalf of the board in regards to the property at 285 Dimple Road. If there's no other questions or Comments? I'll need the motion for approval. I move that we approve the designation of the board president or the designee to speak on behalf of the board in regards to the property at 285 Dinkle Road, uh, today's date through November 15th. Let's have a motion. So we have a motion and a second. I think we will do roll call vote on this. Lady Burns, I vote yes. Linda Hudson, I vote yes. Dr. Chavis, yes. Charles Armijo, yes. And then moving on. Um, Mr. President, members of the board, I recommend that we adjourn the meeting. We have a recommendation from Superintendent Salazar for adjournment. I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. um, a second. So a motion and a second. Uh, all members in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all.